So this is going to be a review of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. This is the second attempt of bringing the acclaimed Nickelodeon animated series to live action after the less than stellar 2010 film from M. Night Shyamalan. And yes, I'm intentionally saying his name wrong. Now the series has been out for a few weeks now. All episodes were available on premiere day, February 25th. I didn't start watching the series until a few days later after it premiered and I paced my viewings with watching one episode a day. It allowed me to better savor the experience and not feel like I'm in a rush to finish everything. I like pacing things out. More power to you if you're one of those who binged watch the entire show in one day, but that's just not really my style. Now to understand how I feel about this new version would require insight on how I felt about the previous versions of this series or the story. Though I was a kid at the time the original animated series premiered in like 2004 or something, I never actually watched the series until years later. You know, I guess it was just one of those fads that I missed in my life, despite continually hearing how good or great it was. People saying it was among the greatest cartoons ever made. I mean, holy sh**. You know, that's some praise right there. To learn before he's ready to save anyone. It wasn't until 2020 where I was locked up like everyone else, where the series was put on Netflix. And with me having plenty of time to spare, I watched the series and definitely thought it was really damn good. It was a fun series that has some great mythology, epic storytelling, and it was the perfect blend of fun for kids and adults. After that, it was finally time to watch the 2010 live action film, which I had heard many infamous things about. Watching the film, you can definitely see where it earned its reputation as being one of the worst films of all time, like a majority of the opinions seem to state out there. It's definitely not good. While the core story is intact from the original series, the movie is just lifeless, as the energy, fun, dynamic characters are rotting zombies compared to their Nickelodeon counterparts. Not to mention the movie has some of the most obnoxious race swapping I've ever seen with what was done with the Fire Nation here. And for f sakes, I mean, they couldn't even say characters' names properly. You know, the main character, Aang, it was said Ong in this movie. For those reasons, the film's director, M. Night Shyamalan, will forever be known as M. Night Shyamalan. Thankfully, a few months after watching the Nick series for the first time, the sequel series, The Legend of Korra, was also put on Netflix. And while I don't think it's as great as the original Avatar series, it was definitely really good also. Now, because I had only seen the Nick series once, I felt it necessary and fun to do sort of a dual watch of the original series and the Netflix series so I could properly compare things and add some fun perspective with things here. I paced it to where I was ahead with the Nick series before the Netflix series. I even rewatched the Shyamalan movie halfway through watching the Netflix version to add even more perspective and do a little No Way Home or Into the Airbenderverse type fun. This eight episode Netflix series mostly follows the story of how things played out in the Nick series season one, also referred to as book one, Water, where Aang, the last of the airbender tribe, is found frozen in ice by a brother and sister duo of the water tribe. As Aang is an avatar, the reincarnation of a powerful spirit capable of mastering all four elements, water, fire, earth, and air. The trio decides to journey to the north to find Aang a master to teach him waterbending so he can eventually save the world from the Fire Nation. Most episodes here average in length being about 50 minutes, the shortest one was like 40 minutes here, with the longest one actually being the first episode which was a full hour. Like most movies and series that I see these days, I just didn't really watch a lot of trailers for this series, so I was pretty fresh going in and didn't quite know what to expect in terms of what they were going for besides the basic posters. Now the first episode though had me excited to the highest degree. While I don't want this whole review to be a comparison to the M. Night Shyamalan film, you can't help but immediately notice how much more of a fateful adaptation that this Netflix series is. You know, the casting, the humor, the general look of the show are exactly what it should be. It was really beautiful to see because it had those moments that made the show special. You know, it was fun when it needed to be, exciting when it needed to be, and properly dark and emotional in key spots. And hearing that credits chant at the end was just the cherry on top. I mostly love the casting and portrayal of the core four characters here. You know, Aang is that cheerful boy that still feels that saddle of responsibility, being the Avatar, the one who's supposed to save the goddamn world. 
you have Katara, who definitely feels like that kind-hearted spirit, yet still strong personality that she was in the Nickelodeon series. Though I will say that she doesn't feel quite as spirited or as lively as her Nickelodeon counterpart, but that's mainly because her original voice actress was so goddamn amazing for that show. The best casting here, though, was for Sokka. I mean, sure, he looks just like him, like all the other casting mostly is here. But man, did they really nail those moments of humor where he just ends up on the wrong side of things. Though thankfully and rightfully, they didn't make him a total goofball here. You couldn't help but be amazed by Prince Zuko. You know, he's an amazing character in the Nick show and those elements were brought here. Thankfully, his race and his scar weren't fucked up in this version like the original Shyamalan version. Though I will say that even though his haircut is accurate to how it was in season one of the Nick show, man, does that look incredibly silly in live action. That really would suck for that actor if he really did have to get that haircut in real life. I mean, my goodness, does that look like sh**. The great feelings that I had after watching episode one mostly continued through the remainder of the series. What was impressive here was how the writers found ways to combine notable storylines and character appearances into episode by episode narratives that worked for the pacing of this show you know given the whole time frames they were allotted here the story and pacing of the original nick show which was 20 episodes 22 minutes each can't be done the same way as the netflix series here which is eight episodes about 50 minutes each all of this makes you see how bad an idea it was to even do a movie of the series unless you were going to make it, you know, at least two hours and 40 minutes long. But even then, a whole lot of stuff would have had to have gotten cut out. There was a lot of clever things done here in terms of being a story adaptation, episode for episode. Like in the Nick series, the episode where Katara and Kasaka get COVID-style sick and Ang leads to go find medicine and eventually gets captured by the Fire Nation. Well, the Netflix version here, this isn't a major spoiler, Aang leaves to go get help because Katara and Sokka's spirits are trapped in a spirit world, and the part of those two being in the spirit world was not in the OG show. But the writers found a clever way to combine two storylines from the, from the show to make a more seamless narrative and help the pacing. You know, this was an example of changes working in this show's favor. There are other sequences and storylines that are changed around, like when certain supporting characters appear, like Jet or that bounty hunter, or where certain storylines start, or where they visit certain places. And I like this because I believe it'd be incredibly boring to be do a basic ABC by the books adaptation. You know, the key sequences that you want to see, though, are still there, like a Tara stand that she takes in the Northern Water Tribe to show that she's capable of being a waterbender despite being a girl. You know, key stuff is thankfully still in there, so it remains a fateful adaptation. One very notable change is the removal of a key scene of romance between Aang and Katara. It switched up in terms of the characters that appear in this scene from the Nick show. I guess they just thought it was too soon for romance for Aang and Katara, given how I guess they're kids. But, you know, I would have liked to have seen a little something given what their ultimate destiny is in the future. But yeah, there's basically zero romantic development for those two here. Amazingly, though, this whole sequence that I'm talking about from this Netflix show was not in the original season one. It appeared in the later seasons of the Nick series, and they decided to make the choice to include it here. I'm not really sure what the reason for that was, besides the fact that maybe they had a clever way to do a twist on it. The other major thing included here that was not in the original season one was the inclusion of Zuko's sister, Azula. Now, she doesn't have a major part to play in this season one of the Netflix show. They're rightfully saving all that stuff for later. But I actually didn't mind the inclusion of her here, as I guess it better sets up for what's to come for her in the future and did add some motivation and made us understand Zuko more in this version. One of the more notable episodes from the original Nick series was the whole scene that I talked about a little bit earlier, where Aang gets captured by the Fire Nation and the rescue mission that happens to save him. This scene was actually more or less faithfully done in the Shyamalan movie, and it was obviously always going to be included here. Now, there was a creative decision at the end of this whole sequence that was brilliant in terms of how things played out with the conversation Aang had with a certain character after this scene. Watching this sequence, I was like, whoa, you know, this is actually adding something great to the original version of this scene, even though the whole general conclusion is the same and they found a way to thematically include some much needed backstory. In this whole sequence, I was like, wow, these writers really know what they're doing here. This is top-notch stuff in terms of an adaptation. 
Now, a lot of what I've talked about in terms of comparing this to previous versions of the story won't obviously mean anything to you if you've not watched the original show, the original Shyamalan movie, or doing a dueling marathon like I was. Even if you haven't seen the Nick show, though, I still think you can enjoy this show because it's got good production value. There wasn't anything that really looked bad here. You'll like the characters, and it did what the Nick show did, which is blend being fun, epic, and occasionally dark-ish. My rating for this would be 9 out of 10 arrowhead tattoos for Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. Like all things, I don't look at reviews until after I post my own review. So at the time I'm doing this, I still haven't really looked at like the Rotten Tomatoes score or anything like that. Though I did see headlines saying that reviews were mixed to positive. You know, anyone who's giving this a bad review can go f*** themselves. You know, I thought this was great. It reminded me of how I felt watching HBO Max's The Last of Us last year, or watching something that you, the previous version is great, the original story, and what was great about the original story is translated into the new version, you're like, wow, this is just a great adaptation that's faithful, but changing things to work in the narrative that it's provided as a show. I can't wait to see more in terms of what's to come from book two, book three, eventually a Legend of Korra series, though they'll have to move quick when it comes to Avatar The Last Airbender so the kid actors, mainly Aang, doesn't age out of his role. So that'll do it for this review of Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. You made it to the end of this review. Thank you for watching.